Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and in this episode of Clever Code, we're going to be taking a look at a new problem and how to solve it in a clever way. So, for this case, we're going to be looking at this maxmin.cpp. And the basic problem statement is, is we have, say, some vector, and what we want to do is we want to figure out what the difference is between the max element and the min element inside of the vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it up, and let's look at a very intuitive way to solve the problem to begin with. So the very intuitive way is we'll go ahead and loop over um, all the elements inside of the vector, right? And for all of those elements, we'll compare it against all of the other elements. And for each of those pairs, we'll go ahead and figure out what the max is, right? In this case, it's going to be the max difference. It will either be temp, right? Or it'll be the absolute difference of two numbers, right? So it'll be i minus j, right? And we want the absolute value because all we care about is the difference between them, right? So between, say, um, you know, if we do 10 minus 3 or 3 minus 10, all we really care about is that there's seven total elements between those two numbers. So we're just using the absolute value here, right? And we want the max of whatever temp is. We just initialize it to zero in this case. So what's the problem with this, right? So there's two problems here. And as usual, we want to uh, greater code not only by its performance but by its readability right so how's the readability of this code well whenever we have doubly nested for loops we're already, we already might be complicating things for ourselves but maybe not so let's take a look a little bit further if we go into this all of a sudden we see we've got a max function so this function comes from standard um, from algorithm in the standard library and then we have absolute value of some number. So now we've got a nested function call, right, of uh, you know the difference of i minus j comparing using the max of temp, and we're doing this for you know i to v, um, or for i and v, and for j and v, right, which is a vector. Right? It's already becoming a little bit difficult to understand. Right? It's not too difficult, but still, right, you can imagine that functions like this can start getting out of hand, and it, you know, just looking at it, it's not very intuitive what's going on here or what the problem is that we're trying to solve, right? That's the key thing is it's not directly apparent what we're solving when we look at this code. Okay, so how do we solve this in a better way? So most of the time when we're thinking about solving a problem, it's often better if we can think of, well, what is the representation of my data? In many cases, the representation of my data is directly associated with the cost or the performance of whatever I'm implementing. So if I can do some kind of uh, pre-processing ahead of time to my data to make it an easier problem to solve, I'd like to do that. So intuitively, I want to figure out what the smallest number is and what the biggest number is. Well, this pairwise thing works, but I know something else that will give me that uh, answer very easily, right? And it doesn't require n squared comparisons, right? So this is guaranteed to be um, n squared because I always have to do um, every single comparison between every pair of numbers here, right? However, I know if I just use sort from the standard library, right, I can go ahead and reduce this problem to n log n complexity, right? So we can do sort with things like merge sort or quick sort, right, and n log n, right? But something like this is going to be n squared, right? And then once I have a sorted vector, then I all I have to do is I just have to look at whatever the element at the back is of the vector. So that'll be the biggest element if it's in sorted order. And then I can subtract to whatever at the front of the vector, right? So that will be the element that is the smallest inside of the vector, right? So I basically just reduce, I turn my problem into a new problem, but that new problem I can solve a lot faster and the end result I can get exactly what I'm looking for. So sometimes we have to come up with clever ways in order to solve a problem faster by turning it into a different problem that we know how to solve really well. Okay, but this still isn't optimal, right? So how can we make this even better? Well, a lot of times if there's say some common function that we want to solve or some common problem rather that we want to solve, it's probably a standard template library uh, function for that. And in this case, there is, right? So in this case, there's this min max element function, and it does exactly what it says. It gives you the min element and the max element. And the great thing is, is that it's faster than sort, right? So sort is in log n. I think uh, the worst case for um, 
uh, the worst case for a min max element you can actually generally look this up so if we go ahead and look this up um, on the other screen and we look up what min max element is and you pull it up on say cpp reference you can see that down here it will actually tell you the complexity right and it's floor of three halves times n minus one right so it's not even in log n it's you know three halves times n minus one right so it's gonna be faster than this uh, upper version as well but the key thing is it's also even more intuitive right so this one we're changing the problem to sort and then we're doing back minus front so it takes me two steps to figure out what's going on here if I just have a single function that says, oh, it gives me the minimum element and the maximum element, incredibly easy to understand. I know what's going on immediately, right? So we pass this a beginning of iterator and the end iterator of the vector, and we get back a pair. And this pair is a pair of the min element and the max element. So to access those, we can just do pair.second to get the max element. That's the second element in this pair. And we can do pair.first to get the min element, which will be the first element in this pair. And we can dereference those iterators, right? And it gives us the same thing as this back minus run, pretty much. However, we can make this even better, right? It doesn't make it better, say, maybe performance-wise, but um, from a you know, readability-wise, if we know, understand C17, then we can start talking about structured bindings. So with structured bindings, we can basically unpack this pair earlier. So in this case, we'll just use an auto type again. And here we can automatically unpack those two iterators and set them to be min and max, right? So these are just variable names, right? So we'll set the um, pair.first to be min and pair.second to be max. So we're basically just unpacking this pair ahead of time. Then I can just return max minus min. This is incredibly intuitive, right? And it's also, you know, great performance, right? Because we're using min max element. So for example, we'll go ahead and do this on this simple vector. So the max element and min element, I know ahead of time I set them. So max element will be 41, min element will be one. We take the difference of those two, that will be equal to 40. And if we go ahead and compile this, so we'll do G++ max min dash O max min, right? And I have to remember I'm using structured bindings right in here. So I need to set the standard equal to C++ 17. So I don't get any compiler warnings or errors. And then I can run this and indeed I get 40 for all of them. And then I can change this up. And what if I change say 20 to instead be say 500 or 5,000, right? I can recompile this. I can go there, I can run it again. And now I get 499, right? And that makes sense because 500, which is a max element minus one, which is the min element, would give me 499, right? So let's kind of recap what we went over here. Right. So very intuitive way to solve this problem right, is you just do all possible comparison. It's a brute force way to solve it. But A, it's kind of hard to read. B, bad performance. Right. We're always doing uh, comparing all possible combinations. Not great. So the second way, we just turn the problem into a different problem. If we sort the array ahead of time and then subtract the largest number from the smallest number, we get exactly what we want. It's faster, right? Because sort is going to be way faster than doing this all possible comparisons, right? So still good, right? Still not quite as intuitive as we'd like it to be because now we're doing a sort here, right? And this doesn't directly say, hey, I want the max and the min element. This is just saying sort the elements. However, if we understand the standard template library, um, we know that we've got this min max uh, element function and we get back a pair to the min and the max element. And we can make this even more clear using structured bindings where we can just immediately unpack these iterators into min and max. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, if you like any of this code, feel free to check it out at github.com slash coffee before arch. So all this code is hosted um, up here. So under this clever code repository, here we have max min, so feel free to download this, play around with it, and let me know if you have any questions. We also have other series on, say, C++ programming, GP programming with CUDA, and parallel programming in C++. That's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.